Welcome to part 23 of Basic Training, the weekly series where I teach you how to play every track in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Today we're going to be covering everything you need to know about Royal Raceway on 150cc. I'll be walking you through the advanced strategies that I use in my current personal best, as well as some alternative strategies that you can use if those are proving to be just a bit too much. Without further ado, let's get into the guide, starting with the recommended build. For Royal Raceway, you're pretty much good to go with our usual tryhard build of Waluigi, Bitty Buggy, Azure Rollers, and Paper Glider. Really good all around build that places a slightly higher emphasis on mini turbos rather than speed, which is useful because we're going to be drifting a lot on this course. Case in point, you're basically non stop drifting for the first 20 or so seconds of the run. Thing is, every piece of that first 20 seconds acts as a setup for the next piece, so we're going to walk through the whole thing quickly first and then break down each piece in detail. Make sure to stick around for the whole video because I guarantee that a surface level explanation of these strategies will not be enough for you to replicate the run. So, when the run begins, we're going to make our way to the left hand side of the track and then start a left drift around the first turn. You want to build up a mini turbo and then use the boost to hop over a little bit of the off road and then land immediately in another left drift. Build up a super mini turbo while grabbing the three coins and then start a right drift. You want to stay as close to the right hand track barrier as possible, build up an ultra mini turbo, and then do a left hop into right drift around the next turn. Grab the coin, build up a super mini turbo, and do another left hop into right drift. After you build up a mini turbo, release and do a left drift, and when you get to the track barrier, you should have yet another mini turbo built up. So release, use the boost to hop over the grass, do another hop as soon as you land to get onto the ramp, and then trick off of the ramp when you get to the end of it. Finally, land in a right drift, grab the two coins, and build up a super mini turbo before the long straightaway. Okay, so that was a super surface level explanation of the start of the run, but we need to see how all of it looks so that we can get a better sense of how every step of the run builds on the steps before it. The first thing we need to go over is the S turn with the left drift super mini turbo into the right drift ultra mini turbo. For the left drift, you don't want to release until you're well into the left lane of the track. This is because it will allow you to take the right turn more tightly, and I cannot overstate how important it is that when you're doing the right drift, you must, must, must make sure to be drifting in such a way that you're as close to the right hand track barrier as possible. This is because you need to make sure that you build up the ultra mini turbo quickly while staying close to the right hand side of the track when you release it. Doing so will allow us to approach the next right turn much more straight on, which gives us more time to hold right on the joystick when going around it. This, along with the left counter hop before the right drift, is what allows us to actually build up the following super mini turbo in the first place. If you're too far to the left after releasing your ultra mini turbo, then what's going to happen is that you'll approach the next right turn from a much less optimal angle. And if you try and do the super mini turbo into mini turbo strat to do the shortcut, it's almost certainly not going to work. Now after releasing that super mini turbo, we're going to do another left counter hop into right drift which is going to allow us to build up that mini turbo more quickly. And then the last part of the strat is the shroomless shortcut. It's honestly a lot easier than it looks. Provided that you've got a mini turbo built up, all you have to do is hop just before getting to the grass and the track barrier should act like a ramp that will carry you almost all the way to the ramp. The optimal way to do this is what I do and hop off the first white section of the track barrier, but if you do this, you'll need to hop once more as soon as you land to get to the ramp without losing any speed. If everything we talked about has proven to be too much of a pain, then what you can do instead is just use the first two turns to build up an ultra mini turbo. If you do this, you'll still be able to build up an ultra mini turbo around the next turn, but you'll be way too far to the left of the track due to the super mini turbo into mini turbo strats before the shroomless shortcut. But it doesn't matter much because all you have to do is just build up a regular mini turbo in place of the super mini turbo. From the limited amount of testing I could do, these strategies seem to lose about half a second over the optimal strats. Similarly, if the Shuma shortcut is giving you issues, then obviously just drive around the track like normal, but that's going to also lose you about half a second. And it's not really that difficult to do, so I would definitely recommend putting in the effort to learn it. Fortunately, after this, the rest of the track isn't really so bad. Drive straight up the long ramp, and then after grabbing the first coin, do a left hop into a hard right drift so that you can build up a mini turbo before going off the glider. Keep holding your drift and your mini turbo will release automatically, and then just hold up and left on the joystick so that you can get back to the track and grab the two coins. This is an example of glider vectoring, and it saves about a tenth of a second, give or take, over just tricking off the ramp, but it's obviously going to be a bit more difficult to execute. In either case, just keep holding down the drift button while in midair so that when you land, you can immediately start a left drift while grabbing your tenth coin. There's not much to explain about the mushroom shortcut other than try and get to the left hand side of the track and stay as close to the wall as possible. You'll build up a super mini turbo before your mushroom runs out, and if you're doing the cut well enough, your mushroom will actually run out just before you get out of the off road. So just hop into a right drift after building up the super mini turbo, and that should be enough to get you back onto the track. 
Laps two and three are pretty similar to lap one, with the only real difference being that just after coming out of the Shroomless shortcut and going into the long straightaway, I hold my Super Mini Turbo Drift until I'm facing pretty far to the right. This allows me to do two left hops into a right drift to build up an extra Mini Turbo before the glider section. Putting everything together is much easier said than done, so let's talk a bit more about the track while checking out my current personal best. By the way, if you found the video helpful so far, I'd really appreciate if you could drop a like since this is one of the best ways to help make sure the video gets spread to other people looking to improve at the game. Now, it should go without saying that even though the whole track is pretty difficult, the front half is much harder than the back half. Like I hinted at earlier, this is because the whole thing basically acts like one gigantic setup for the Shroomless shortcut, and by far the most difficult part of the run is the Super Mini Turbo into Mini Turbo strat just before the ramp. Thing is, this is made much more difficult on laps 2 and 3 due to the increase in speed that we'll get from having 10 coins. In fact, it's so much more difficult that I basically don't even attempt to do it at all on my current PB, even though the world record goes for it on all 3 laps. It's funny, because I actually had a version of this video where I didn't even bother with it because it was so frustrating to learn, and I was just planning on including a clip from the world record to talk about it. But that felt really unsatisfying, and so I spent a good 2 or 3 hours just trying to figure out how to do it so that I could actually explain it to you all. And once I finally got it, I was actually able to drop my PB from about a 201 flat to just over 2 minutes. Now if you'll recall, I mentioned that I only do the double left hop mini turbo strat before the glider on laps 2 and 3. I actually wasn't planning on going for this at all, but I got a really sick lap 1, and I decided that I wanted to be risky and pull out all the stops to break that sub 2 minute barrier. And fortunately I was actually able to make that happen in the end. However, it should be noted that the world record does that strategy on all 3 laps. Speaking of the world record, it's basically just a cleaner version of my PB with only three real differences. The first, like I already mentioned, is doing the double left top mini turbo strat on all three laps. The second difference is that in the glider section, I just do normal old glider vectoring, whereas the world record actually does motion glider, saving an additional tenth of a second or two. Check out my motion glider tutorial if you want more information about that. The final difference is that the world record does an additional shroomless shortcut just after the mushroom cut. It's super precise and only saves about a tenth of a second or so compared to just driving the track normally like I do, and I neither had the patience nor the ability to figure out how to do this consistently. Especially because the few times that I actually did manage to get the shortcut, I apparently didn't get it correctly because it ended up just being slower. In either case, I've put a link to the most recent world record as of the recording of this video in the description below if you're interested in checking that out. And that's everything you need to know about Royal Raceway on 150cc. One of my favorite things about Royal Raceway is that the difficulty is really spread across the entire track, unlike courses like Shy Guy Falls or Donut Plains 3 where the difficulty is more or less entirely contained in one difficult to execute shortcut. In my humble opinion, Royal Raceway might actually be one of the most well designed courses in the game, at least on 150cc. But that's going to be it for me for today everyone, if you found the video helpful please don't forget to drop a like and also let me know down in the comments how much time you were able to save with the advice I laid out here. Also. Check out my previous video in this series if you want to learn how to play Donut Plains 3 on 150cc, which is the perfect example of all the difficulty being contained in one small section of track. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to do some basic training, and as always, I will see you in the next video.